I have some things to say. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I'm so excited for this video because guess what came in the mail? The new Hourglass Holiday Palettes for 2022. I have all three of these palettes. What we're going to be doing today is a very Sophia style review. I'm going to be giving you a tour of each of the palettes. We're going to swatch them. We're going to compare them. I'm going to be doing daylight applications on both my face and also my eyes. And then of course at the end, I'm going to sum up all my final thoughts, letting you guys know if I think these are worth it and also which one should you get? So if you are interested in these new holiday palettes from Hourglass, then keep watching. If this happens to be your first time here, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia and this is my channel where we talk about all things beauty and luxury. Every single week I upload content on all the newest luxury beauty releases. So if that is of interest to you, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button to join the fam because we have so, so much fun on this channel. And you can also hit the notification bell to hear that every time I upload a new video. Your girl here has been swatching all morning, applying these to my face, taking my makeup off putting my makeup back on. It does take me a lot of time to make these reviews. So if you like this style of you, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. I will also be linking all these products down below. A lot of my links are affiliate links. So if you like this review and you want to support my channel, shopping through those links is a really great way to do so at no additional cost to you. All right, friends, let's get into it. If for some reason you are not familiar with Hourglass, then let me introduce you to this brand. They are a luxury brand and one of their biggest specialties are face powders, sort of setting powders, finishing powders, blushes, highlighters, bronzers. And they develop these really interesting baked formulas that really give this beautiful, soft, pretty much airbrushed effect to the skin. Their powders are very, very popular. And personally for me, they're my favorite products that the brand makes. Every single holiday season, what we normally see from them is some sort of curation, some sort of palette that will be released around this time. Originally, we used to get one palette. Then last year we got two two palettes and then this year Hourglass finally listened to us and we got three. Hourglass has been criticized in the past for really not catering these palettes to deeper skin tones so even though I am super fair I am going to do my best throughout this review to sort of comment on which of these palettes will work for different skin tones and definitely comment down below if any of you guys pick these up if you have a different skin tone to me comment down below and let me know how each palette worked for you. Now these palettes are pretty expensive which is why I like to do these kinds of reviews. I spend my money so you don't have to. I let you know if it's worth it. These each retail for $85. I was able to get 10% off when I purchased through the Hourglass website. So just a little tip for you guys. At the time of me making this video, they are only available on the Hourglass website. However, I have no doubt that these will be coming to Sephora and I am sure that they are going to be available in the Sephora sale. If you didn't get these yet, you might want to wait for them to come to Sephora if you like racking up those Sephora points or you want to get a little bit of a discount this upcoming Sephora VIB sale. Let me read the description of these palettes from the Hourglass website so we can kind of become acquainted with this collection. It says, introducing three limited edition ambient lighting edit unlocked palettes available exclusively for holiday 2022. Featuring artwork by world-renowned illustrator Katie Scott, these six pan palettes are a celebration of the natural world, including best-selling and brand new shades of blush, bronzer, highlighter, and finishing power for a glowing complexion. 5% of profit from the Unlocked support the non-human rights project in their efforts to secure fundamental rights for animals. Correct me if I'm wrong, friends, but didn't we have another palette that was called Unlocked from a few years past? I remember it was one of the holiday palettes. It had slightly deeper tones and it sold out like crazy and then they brought it back the year after. And I think that one was also called Unlocked. So I find this a little bit, <laughs> I find this to be a little bit confusing, but comment down below and let me know if I'm right. I'm pretty sure there was already a palette that was called Unlocked. In the description, it does say that these are limited edition. However, if you go on the Hourglass website, you can find the holiday palettes from at least last year. I actually think the past two years. So if you guys are interested in those, or maybe you always wanted to get those and you don't care for either of these after you watch this review, you can find them. It's hard to predict, but based off of past years, these just are not selling out like they used to. Maybe it's because a lot of the tones are kind of very repetitive. We'll get into that into the review, but I just want to mention that they're limited edition, but but so far, that doesn't really mean that much on the Hourglass website. And like it says in the description, this year, instead of sort of a plain palette, I'll show you an example right here of kind of packaging from the past. These come with absolutely beautiful illustrations of all of these gorgeous animals. I like this. I think it feels much more luxe. It has kind of like a tin metal sort of feel, similar to the Universe palettes that we saw last year. I prefer this. I just think it feels more substantial. I like 
like the fact that we get a little bit of artwork. We get something pretty, something cute. These are $85, so I want cute packaging. I know a lot of you on Instagram were saying that these remind you of kind of Shanta Kai, and they're also donating some money to the Non-Human Rights Project. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I do kind of see the two brands competing quite a bit. One last thing that I want to mention about the packaging, friends, is that if you shop on the Hourglass website, you can customize the packaging. And what I mean by that is that you can pick the inside of the palette so you can choose the colorway that you want among the three and then you can customize it by also selecting your preferred artwork that you want as a part of your palette so i thought that that was fantastic because like i don't know a lot of times when we buy things for the packaging i know i've done it as well but this way you really get your money's worth because not only do you get the colors that you prefer but you also get the packaging that you prefer my guess is that this will not be available on Sephora. I don't know that for sure, but that would be my guess. My assumption also would be that if you customize it, it probably will take just a little bit longer for it to ship. Now for the purposes of this review, I have just ordered the default colorways and packaging. I don't need to be confusing you guys. So the tiger powders go in the tiger packaging and same goes for the other two palettes. The last thing that I want to get into before we do the swatches and the demos, don't worry, they are coming, is just kind of how much product you get and what that means from a value perspective. So these retail for $85. And what you'll find is that each of these little pans, they have the same amount of product that you would get from the mini sizes that Hourglass sells. So each of those mini sizes is 1.4 gram, which means at the price of $85, you are paying $10.11 a gram. If you were to purchase just the full pan sizes of these, the individual products, in that case, you are paying $5 a gram. So if you're looking at this from a value perspective, you're actually paying twice as much for the product. But that being said, personally, I don't really mind. It takes me a really long time, even if I use these powders every single day, which in many cases I have, especially with the finishing powders and the bronzers. I like the curation. I like that it's travel friendly. I like the packaging. I like to have everything together, at least as it relates to our glass products. So I just want to mention that it's technically not a good value if you're searching for value or if maybe, you know, there's a couple of shades in here that aren't going to work for you. My recommendation, just kind of saying this from the start, would be to just go and buy the singles that work for you. All right, friends, now that we have all those details out of the way, let's get into each of these palettes. I will be going through each of them one by one, swatching them, giving you guys my thoughts, and also showing you a daily application on my face and on my eyes. So let's get into that. First up, we have the Butterfly palette. Now this one has the fewest new shades. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little tour of this palette. Right here, we have two finishing powders, which are existing shades. We also have this very soft highlighter. This is one of the ones that you would see in sort of some of the older Hourglass palettes that has a very, very soft look to the skin. So we have a highlighter here. We also have a more high shine strobe highlighter right here in the corner. So these two highlighters, very different finishes. And then we have two blushes right here. Given all of that, you will notice there is no bronzer in this palette, which is something that we have seen from previous palettes from Hourglass. So personally for me, it's a little bit of a downside, but I I do appreciate just kind of some of the differences in the textures and the levels of shimmer from this palette. Let me show you all the swatches of this palette. You will notice this is very, very light. Aside from the blushes, the colors are pretty pale. This is definitely going to be for my fairer ladies out there. If you are similar to my skin tone, this palette is probably going to work just fine for you. If you are tanner or deeper, probably run away because as you could see, the finishing powders are quite light. Looking at those two finishing powders, they do have different tones you can tell from the swatches but they're very very similar if you take a look at the demo i put one on one side of my face and i put one on the other and guys like i really can't tell the difference it's very very minute you know i like to use the different tones of the different powders for different things a lot of times i like to take the lighter one and put that under my eyes just to kind of add a little bit more brightness and illumination you can sort of sculpt your face with them but when it comes to the ones in this butterfly palette i just think that those two tones are too similar to each other to really make it worth it. I feel like it's a waste of a space. Next up, let me show you the swatches of the blushes. These are described both as a deep mauve and also a terracotta. They're not exactly the same, but I kind of have the same gripe with the blushes as I do with the finishing powders. I think that they're very similar. It does make it a little easier to sort of layer them up if they are similar in tone but have slightly different finishes.
finishes. But when you see me apply these to my face, I think that most of you will agree with me. Like these look very, very similar. Once again, I don't think we need two blushes that are nearly the same shade. Next, I wanna show you what the strobe highlighting powder looks like. This is the one in the palette I mentioned that is just kind of like that softer texture that you saw from a lot of the original Hourglass palettes. This is really pretty. I think if you're somebody that, if you're fair like me and you want something very subtle, I like the option of having a softer highlighter, but I will show you guys a quick swatch comparison right here. It's only a little bit more strobey or more metallic than the finishing powders. When you swatch them all side by side, the differences are very subtle. I will say when it goes onto the face, I, I can I can see a difference. I can see a little bit of strobe, but I just wanna show this for you all because the tones are very, very similar and they are also very, very fair. Lastly, I wanna show you all the metallic strobe highlighting powder. This is the one that is punchier, more metallic. You can go in with a light hand if you want it to be a little more subtle or you can really go in there. This this is beautiful. This looks so, so beautiful. It's perfect for fairer skin tones. I like that they included this in the palette. They didn't always have this formula in these palettes and I'm really glad that they do because the metallic strobe ones, they're my favorite and not just from Hourglass, but highlighters in general. I absolutely love this formula. I know that it's not for everybody, but I think it's beautiful. I also think it looks really, really beautiful on the eyes. You guys will see the eye look that I created for this. I think that out of all three of the palettes, I think that the butterfly one is the hardest to kind of use on different parts of your face, meaning it's a little bit harder to use as eyeshadow because you don't really have much to put into the crease other than these two terracotta style blushes. But I do really like the look of this highlighter on the eyes, so I will mention that. And this is the final look that I created with the Butterfly palette. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Keep in mind that I am not wearing any bronzer in this look, so it is gonna look a lot paler than the other two that I am about to show you all. Anything else that I am wearing on my face today, by the way, I will link that in the description box down below. If you're curious about the foundation, concealer, or what's on my lips, that'll all be linked down below. Bottom line for the Butterfly palette, number one, this is for paler complexions. Like this really is only going to work on somebody with my skin tone. It's very clear that this is the one that was designed for paler skin tones. Also, I think that this one is probably best for the person who doesn't already have other hourglass palettes from previous holiday seasons because I think a lot of these tones, you can find them in the other palettes. I'll show you guys some comparisons a little bit later in this video. Number three, I think this is great for the person that doesn't really care if they're not getting a bronzer. Maybe you already have a bronzer that you like and instead you're happy with kind of a softer highlight. You like those options. And finally, my final thought on this is that I just think a lot of the shades in here are too similar. It's just kind of a waste having these two. The blushes are too similar to each other. And I think that these powders are also a little bit too similar to each other. That's kind of my biggest gripe with the Butterfly palette. It kind of pisses me off that they just didn't make better use of the spaces in the palette. It just seems completely unnecessary to me. This is my least favorite one. Moving on to the Elephant palette. This is the next one we're gonna be talking about. Let me give you all a tour of what this palette looks like. It is a little bit different from the Butterfly palette in terms of layout. So what we have right here are, number one, there are four new shades as opposed to three from the Butterfly palette. We have two existing finishing powders right here. We do have a bronzer in this one, which is also new. We have two blushes right here, and then we have another metallic strobe highlighting powder. Lucky me because I love those. You will notice amongst all three of these palettes, Hourglass has not made any new ambient lighting powders for any of these. They are just reusing shades from their permanent collection. They're not trying to reinvent the wheel. I kind of understand that because it's like how many types of variations of setting powders can you make if not for deeper skin tone, <laughs> for deeper skin tones. We do not need 15 more finishing powders in this type of color range on this side of the shade spectrum. So I understand why they're just using tried and true existing shades for these. Let me show you guys the full palette swatched on my hand in daylight. You'll notice here instantly, there's a little bit more variety here. Also, the tones are a little bit deeper. I wouldn't say they are deep, but they're definitely not as 
pale leaning as the butterfly palette. Starting off with swatches of the two finishing powders, you'll notice that these are a touch deeper than the butterfly. One has a pinky undertone and the other one has a yellow undertone. I kind of like that because you can sort of use it for color correcting different things. I can't tell a huge difference between the two once they go onto my face, but they are both beautiful finishing powders. I also like to use these finishing powders for kind of buffing out the blushes, buffing out other deeper colors, deeper colored blushes in general if you guys are going in with products from other palettes. I like having the option of these two finishing powders to kind of blur everything together. Next I want to show you what this bronzer looks like. I definitely think that it looks lighter in the pan than it does when it's swatched. It is certainly buildable. I think my main concern here was that I was afraid this was going to be too golden for me. It does have a slight golden shimmer to it and a slightly, I don't even know what else to call it, golden. It has a golden undertone and just being paler, I wasn't really sure how this was going to work, but I thought that this looked beautiful. I didn't think that it was too much. I think that this bronzer will work if you are fair, kind of to medium skin tone. I did watch Charlotte Holcroft's review and she mentioned that this worked on her skin tone. So I'm very happy to hear that because she is quite tanner than I am. So I think if you have a medium skin tone, this bronzer definitely will work for you. Next up in the elephant palette, we have the two blushes. You will notice from the swatches, one of them has a very distinct golden sheen, whereas the other one, it's a little more matte, a little more flat, but still, I'm just kind of annoyed, Hourglass. Like, why did you give us two blushes that were nearly the same? I think it's nice that you can sort of layer them together. So maybe you go in with the matte one and then you can go in with the shimmery one and you just kind of glow it up a little bit. But in general, I think that it is a ways to include two blushes that are just so, so similar. You will see in the demo what these look like on my cheeks and you can see the differences between them. Can I tell the difference? Yeah, I can tell the difference, but if I'm buying a palette for $85, I just wanna see a little bit more variety, especially as it comes to the blushes. Lastly, we have the Metallic Strobe Highlighter. This is beautiful. It's a little deeper and more golden than the one in the Butterfly palette. I'm gonna compare all those later, don't you worry. I was kind of concerned that maybe this would be a little bit too deep for my complexion, but I thought that it worked just fine. I think that this is going to work for a lot of skin tones from the fair to kind of medium spectrum. Just like I said with the Butterfly palette, I really like this form. Formula. I thought it melted together really well with the bronzer, which like I mentioned is also a little bit more golden. Also, I thought that this looked absolutely stunning on the eyes, especially because it has that bronzer shade. I think it looks very beautiful, very ethereal in the crease. I think that the metallic strobe highlighter looks so good on the eyes. And I also went in with the blushes just kind of like on the outer corner. And I was very smitten with this eye look. This is what the final look looks like. Comment down below and let me know what you think of this. Does it suit my skin tone? Do you think that it would work for yours if you are a little bit you know, tanner, maybe a bit more medium skin tone? I would love to hear your thoughts, but I was really pleased with the way that this worked out. I was very unsure just because some of these are a bit, you know, they're a little bit more golden, but I thought that it worked out in the end. Bottom line for the Elephant palette, I think that out of the three, this will probably be the one that is the most accessible for the most skin tones. And what I mean by that is that even if you're super fair, I think you can wear this palette. Even if you are tanner to medium, I think you can wear this palette. If you are deeper, however, I think this is going to be probably too light for you. I don't really see how it would be worth your money because these two finishing powders, they're just like going to be too light for you. But comment down below. If you are deeper and you pick this one up, I would love to hear how it works, but I don't think I would bet on this one if you have a deeper skin tone. In addition, I think that this one is good if you were looking for a bronzer. If you liked that about previous hourglass palettes, which I know I did. I think that the bronzer is probably like the one thing that I use the most in these palettes. And so I do really like that about this. I also think that the highlight is beautiful. You're not gonna be getting a more subtle highlight in this one, like in the butterfly palette. But if you're good with that metallic strobe like I am, then you're good to go. Finally, we have the third palette. This is the tiger palette. Let me give you all a little tour of this one. Like the elephant palette, this one also has six new shades. So let me give you all a tour. First off, we have a finishing powder here that you will notice 
this is much deeper than the other two palettes. This one is an existing shade. This is the shade that is the middle shade in the Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 3, the trio that they came out with for darker skin tones. This is the one that is the middle shade in that palette, which by the way, side rant, I noticed that this shade is not available as a single as a part of the permanent collection. I'm not sure if any of those deeper shades are available as singles. At least they aren't on Sephora. Correction, this shade is available on the Hourglass site. It is the darkest color that they offer in singles. It looks like they have only two deep shades in singles, Golden Amber, which says that it's new, and this one, Warm Sienna, which they say is new. But they're not available on Sephora. At least they're not available on Sephora US, so my opinion still kind of stands. And I just think that that is messed up. Like these need to be available as singles. That is not fair. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that aside for now and continue my review of this palette. We also have three all new highlighters. Now this one right here, it's going to be a little softer and more multi-dimensional. And then these two here, they're going to be that metallic strobe formula. They are a little bit more intense than the one that is right here. Then here over to the side, we have two gorgeous deep Deeper blushes. This one is already existing. It's kind of like a beautiful deeper rose toned blush. And then we have this stunning coral shade right here. And this is also a new blush shade. Also, this is my favorite packaging of the three. Were we surprised? No, we weren't surprised. Y'all can see my cat sleeping right there on her chair in the background. I am a cat lady. I love this. I love the juxtaposition of the beautiful orange tiger with the blue background. I think that it's so cute. It's also still the year of the tiger. So this kind of reminds me of a lot of those Lunar New Year releases that we were seeing at the beginning of the year. Let's take a look at all the swatches for this palette. Clearly, this one is much deeper than the other two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We finally got something more pigmented, something more deeper from Hourglass. Also, you will notice that these shades, they're a lot warmer than the other two palettes. Uh, I love these shades. If you're new to my channel, I love warm tones. Where was this all summer? Where was this all summer, Hourglass? I don't want this as a holiday release. Least I wanted this earlier in the year for my summertime, but putting that aside, putting that aside, let's go through each of these and swatch them and put them on my face. Starting off with the finishing powder in Transcendent Light. As I mentioned, this is a finishing powder, but for me, I wanted to see if I could use this as a bronzer. For reference, I will also show you guys a swatch of this up against the bronzers from the previous two palettes that I purchased. So we have the Tiger finishing powder, then we have the bronzer from last year's Universe palette, at least the lighter one that they released and then I have the bronzer from volume three which was from a couple years ago so just to kind of show you guys that for reference this it's a little bit deeper than those bronzers so you actually definitely can use this as a bronzer let me show you what this looks like when applied to my face oh I think that this looks really really beautiful this has a gorgeous almost I don't know it's got like a slight pinky to neutral undertone that I think is going to work on a lot of skin tones I think that clearly it will work as a finishing powder if you have a deeper skin tone but I'm also pleased to say that you can use this as a bronzer this is the this is the palette that I'm wearing on my face today by the way I think it looks perfect I think it looks like any other bronzer that I would get from Hourglass I was really happy with the way that it turned out next we have these two beautiful blushes these are pretty pigmented and they're also very glowy I appreciate the fact that they're not the same color. I like the fact that they're different colors and different finishes. I'm gonna show you what each of these look like on my cheeks. First, I tried the coral shade. I would say, friends, if you are very pale like me, just use a very light hand. I am actually using two brushes from the Hourglass line. I will link them down below. And I really like the powder brush, which is very fluffy to kind of pick up these more pigmented blushes and just sort of buff them out. If you are afraid of it being too extreme, I think that using these brushes are absolutely perfect. Then I went in with the rose one. This one's just a little bit more subtle. It also has just a little bit more shimmer in it. It's beautiful. You can really build these up once again I was trying to be careful especially for my pale skin but I think if you have deeper skin these are really going to work and I really really like the tones of these blushes lastly we have the three new highlighters here once again I appreciate the difference in the tones we have brilliant strobe light which is the one I said is going to be a little bit more subtle this is great for a lot of different things it'll work if you have a deeper skin tone but this is also the one where if you are kind of medium to fair it's going to 
be easier to work with if you get this palette and you're trying to figure out like how to use each of the tones or you want one that you can just kind of whack on. This is gonna be the one that works well for you. Super, super pretty. Next, I went in with the Divine Strobe Light. This is gonna be the golden one. This is just like with the other two palettes, it's taking that sort of champagne highlight a step deeper. I'm happy to say this still works pretty well on my skin tone. It also looks really pretty on the eyes, which we'll get to in just a second. I think that it still works. I also think that these highlighters, they work really well with the blushes. I'll kind of show you right here. These two go really well together, and then these two go really well with the coral blush. And finally, I went in with the deepest highlighter right here. This is called Copper Flash. I know that this color can be a little bit intimidating if you have pale skin like me, but once again, just go in with like a really light fan brush or like the Wayne Goss airbrush. If you are deep, I think this is going to be a gorgeous, rich, glowy, coppery kind of highlighter for you. This definitely reminds me of a lot of glowy blushes in my collection. In fact, I think a lot of these colors, they kind of remind me, you know, if you are a fan of the Charlotte Tilbury highlight glow wands, like the Pink Gasm, Pillow Talk 2, peach gasm any of those if you're really into those i think you're gonna like the highlighters in this palette because if you are pale like me these basically just turn into super gorgeous lustrous glowy blushes and if you are a deeper skin tone then it's going to be like a traditional highlight for you another thing that i really like about this palette is that it looks stunning on the eyes because i have a bigger range of tones in here it gives me more to work with if i want to create a really beautiful face and eye look i love the look of the highlighters across the the eyes they're super shimmery super beautiful and then this is the final look guys this is the final look with the tiger palette comment down below and let me know what you think of this i did this one last because this is the one that i wanted to wear on my face today and i think that it looks beautiful side note this you know what this reminds me of from Charlotte Tilbury, the Glowgasm palette. And this is in the shade Lovegasm. I just wanna show you this. I don't think that this is available anymore, unfortunately, but I did wanna show you guys just a little quick side-by-side -side comparison of these palettes. I think that you're getting some very similar tones. So if you really like this one from Charlotte Tilbury, maybe you'll really like this, or if you could never get this one, cause it was kind of hard to get these sold out, then the Tiger palette might be a really good option for you. Bottom line for the Tiger palette, who is this for? This is gonna be for for like your medium to deeper skin tones, especially if you're gonna be using the finishing powder as a finishing powder. But what I like about this palette is that it's also workable if you have a fair skin tone. As you can see, I think it looks beautiful on my face. You guys will let me know in the comments if you agree. I appreciate that we don't get super duplicative shades in here. We have three highlighters, which at first I was like, three highlighters? That's kind of a lot, but at least they're all different and they're kind of like glowy blushes and they look really, really beautiful on the eyes. Before we get into my final thoughts, I do wanna show you all some quick comparisons. I think that this will help demonstrate some of the things that I was saying in the palette breakdown. The first comparison that I want to show you all is the butterfly palette versus the elephant palette okay the elephant palette you're gonna see it's more golden and it's just a touch deeper than the butterfly palette which in general just looks very very fair so I want to show that for you guys because I know if you are sort of fair to medium tone you're probably trying to figure out which of those palettes to buy you might be choosing between the two the next comparison that I want to show you all is a lineup of all of the finishing powders first off you guys are going to see the ones from the butterfly palette at the top they're very white they're very light they're for fair skin tones and then you see the ones from the elephant palette notice how those they're a touch deeper a little more golden and then finally you have that one transcendent light from the tiger palette that is the one that i used as a bronzer so i think that this will help you understand the basic undertones of each palette next i'm giving you guys a lineup of all of the blushes from the three palettes so once again same order we have the butterfly the elephant and the tiger. I think that these comparisons demonstrate that you really don't need all of these palettes. I think that it's going to be tough for all three of these to work for all skin tones. I don't really think that they were designed to be that way. And a lot of these blushes look the same. Like what is it with hourglass and all the rosy blushes? We don't need 
a million shades of rose. I would have liked some of these to be more purple and plum. I would have loved to see more corals, maybe something a little bit different. There are no like nude blushes at all in any of these palettes. I want to show you an example. This is the Ghost palette that they released a couple of years back. They did one that was just blushes. This is one of my favorite blush items, blush, not even blush palettes, but just blushes in general. And I really like the fact that they did so many different tones here, a rose, a coral, this kind of more neutral looking rose, and this beautiful nude. This is, this is one of my favorite blushes ever. I actually really like to mix these two. I wish that they would come to the table with something with a little bit more differentiation like they did with this palette. Next I'm going to show you swatches of the bronzers from these palettes. I have first up the bronzer from the Elephant palette and then below it I have the finishing powder which I used as a bronzer from the Tiger palette. Here you're going to see the swatch from the Elephant palette. It's more golden and the one from the Tiger palette is a little bit more neutral. So hopefully that helps if you're kind of if you're looking to maybe use that to bronze up the skin. Hopefully seeing the difference between those undertones will help you choose which palette to get. Finally I I want to show you guys some shots of what these palettes look like up against palettes from previous years. So starting off with the first shot, and I'm going to go clockwise around this image, I have the Butterfly palette, then I have the Universe, that is the lighter version from last year, then I have the Volume 3 in the bottom right, and then I have the Ghost palette in the bottom left. Unfortunately, I do not have the Sculpture palette and I do not have that previous unlocked palette from a couple years ago. Next, we have the exact same thing, but with the Elephant palette. Once again, you've got the Elephant palette, the Universe palette, the Volume 3, and the Ghost. And finally, we have the same thing, but with the Tiger palette. Now, Looking at all three of these comparisons, the Tiger palette is the palette that is the most unique. I think what this demonstrates is like, if you have hourglass holiday palettes from years past, you don't really need to get the butterfly or the elephant. There's probably going to be a lot of similar shades in there. In fact, I take that back. There's definitely going to be a lot of similar shades in there. Hourglass loves to put rosy toned blushes in a lot of these palettes. Depending on which one you pick, you know, the bronzer might be a little bit different. Maybe you get like a plum shade or a coral shade thrown in there, but a lot of these are very similar, okay? So I just want to point this out because if you have other palettes, you really, you know, if, if you're not sure which one of these to get or one of them doesn't really suit your skin tone all that much, just buy a single, just buy a new hourglass single blush. It's a better value. And so, yeah, I don't know. I just put this out there to help you guys out. I just like these palettes, so I buy them anyway and a lot of you guys do too and you like to collect them but if you're really trying to kind of narrow it down and be a little bit more minimalist and have some self-control I'm hoping that these side-by-side -side comparisons will help you. All right friends I hope that all of this was super helpful for you. I know that these videos that I make they can be a little bit long but these are expensive products so I want to give you guys as much information as possible so you can make a good purchasing decision. It is now time for my final thoughts. What do I think of this release? First off overall I really like like the packaging. I like the theme. I like the fact that these are customizable. I think you get more for your money because you get exactly what you want. So I really appreciate that part of this. I also appreciate the fact that we are getting a bigger range of tones for different skin tones. And here's where I would love your feedback because I'm Paley McPale face right here. I can only speak for myself. I'm really just trying to give you guys my opinion on what I think will work, but help us out. Comment down below and let us know if you have a darker skin tone or any different skin tone than me, which of these ended up working best for you. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to try and link other creators with different skin tones down below as I see more reviews of these palettes being released. But in general, I like the fact that we're getting something different. What I don't really like about these palettes is that that, as I mentioned before, I'm seeing some shades that are just too similar to the other shades in the palette. For example, the Butterfly palette. This could have easily been a trio. It could have been a trio that was like half the price or 60% of the price. Okay, we could have had one finishing powder, one highlighter, you know, maybe, maybe the metallic strobe, and one blush. Boom, call it a day. This one is my least, this one is my least favorite. It's not a bad palette. I still think it's beautiful. I'm going to use it. It just happens to be my least 
favorite. My next favorite one is the Elephant Palette. I think that this is a beautiful palette. I really like the bronzer. There's no product in here that I dislike, but once again, the blushes are very similar. The powders are very similar. Like we just don't, we just don't need shades that are this similar in a palette. I, I think that it actually would be better if they just included one of the finishing powders in that sort of long kind of elongated rectangular pan that they've done in years past. Just have that one shade because these aren't that different. They're not that different. And then maybe go in with more blushes and bronzers and highlighters and that kind of stuff. So I like that they're trying to make these a little more accessible, but a lot of these shades are just a little bit too similar for me. My favorite palette to no one's surprise is the Tiger palette. I think this is going to work for a lot of skin tones. I think it looks beautiful on the eyes. I think it has the widest range of tones. The finishing powder is a finishing powder. If you have a deeper tone, it's a bronzer. If you are fair, if you like warm tones and just brighter blushes. This is going to be great. It's very pigmented. I'm very impressed by this palette. I can definitely see myself using this a lot. So finally, do I think that these palettes are worth it? I think that that is up for you to decide. I have given you guys all of the information that you need to figure that out. I think that if you have palettes from other years, you really don't need any of these except maybe the Tiger palette if you think that this is going to work for you. I love the formula. I think that the quality is great. I love the packaging, but I like some more than others. Anyway, guys, the light is changing. The sun is starting to set, and that is usually my cue to stop talking and let you guys comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I would love to hear what you guys think of this release. Let me know as well, like which artwork you preferred the most. I like the tiger one, but I would love to hear from all of you. And if you have made it through this video and you have not subscribed to my channel then what are you waiting for you need to hit that subscribe button to join our community and if you are not sure head on over to my channel page and take a look at some of the other brands and other products that I like to review and maybe we can become friends if you are not already I welcome you to follow me on Instagram I will put my handle up here so that you all can follow me that is a place where I tell you guys when all of these things drop when they become available at Sephora when they go on sale when they come back in stock all that good stuff that is where you can connect with me on the reg I love to chatting with you guys on a daily basis. So follow me on Instagram. Listen, I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.